How can you make the most out of the next 100 days? Hello, Camp Mavericks, and welcome to the Camp Hacker Podcast. My name is Travis Allison from Go Camp Pro. Uh, I help camps tell the story of what they do so that parents insist on sending their children to summer camp. My name is Abigail Stewart. I'm the Director of Operations at Boxazo Ministry. We're a small nonprofit in the Midwest, and one of the things we do is summer camps every summer. Hi, I'm Ari Polsky, and I am a camp consultant that works in camp marketing, fundraising, and data analysis. Amazing. I am so grateful to have the two of you back. Thank you. We've got some great reviews and great notes from the past episode that you recorded with me late this fall. And uh, I'm grateful to the two of you for coming back. So welcome. So we're going to talk to... Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We're going to talk today, um, you know, thinking about sort of rolling downhill at this point. We're heading into the summer quite quickly. And what do folks need to do? Ari and Abby have been uh, really thoughtful and put together a top 10 list for us. So Ari, do you mind starting us off? Where do you think we should be going and thinking about for making the most? Sure. So I think what's really important is, Travis, you started off with saying that making the most of the next 100 days. Mm. And we're recording this on February 1st, and February 21 marks 100 days till June 1. Camp's right. happening. We know it's happening. It's not a surprise. We shouldn't scramble. So let's go through and make our pre-summer checklists so that we're not scrambling, and we have enough time to do all the things that we want to do in order to make it happen. And checklists have a lot of things that go with it, planning meetings and shopping lists and schedules. And so it's really thinking through what are all the things that fall under those checklists and under those planning meetings that you have to do. Perfect. Perfect. And I love the idea of checklists because it's so good. I think it, it solves one of those problems that is often a, sort of a mindset problem in summer camp is that for a lot of people, you know, sort of uh, summer staff is in and out. And so they don't consider that 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 job actually happens all the time. Like it happens every year. And being able to hand off checklists and reports and things is such a an easy, an easy way to keep camp quality high and think about that. So what all do you want to put on a, a pre-summer checklist, Ari? I would put on all the things that you know you're going to want supply-wise that mm-hmm. you might not need tomorrow, but you need two weeks from now and you will not have the brain space to think about it. So anything that you want throughout the summer, like get your shopping lists ready, schedule them ahead of time, mm-hmm. don't stress about it later, let it all just happen on its own by, you know, set it and forget it on the timeline in terms of shopping. I would think about mass emails, all the emails that you know you're going to have to send, go look at last year's, update the text that you need, set them and forget them, or get them, drop them into your um, email system with their templates saved and you can just make your last minute tweaks when you need to. And I I just want to jump in on, on the planning for mass emails. One of the things that I think is most important is that we acknowledge and accept that camp is complicated. Camp is really hard for parents to pull together because there's a lot of pieces. And um, I hear a lot of frustrations from camp directors who are like, a, my parents don't read. Um, and B, that they're just not, you know, they're not picking up on the important things that we need them to. And then when I ask for details, it's often like kid registers, we send out a PDF that's like, here's your parent handbook. This is how you do summer camp. And that's months. Sometimes it's 11 or, or 12 months before that moment when the kid comes to camp. And it's just, it's just too much. We have to acknowledge and accept that parents are very stressed. There's a lot going on for everybody. And so for me, when I'm thinking about mass emails between, you know, late winter and the summer, I want people to be repeating those messages that they need repeated out of that parent handbook and doing it in different media. It's certainly worth looking at parent handbook and saying, what are the top three things that we need for these parents to feel successful? So parents don't like to feel they, they no one does, but parents don't love that feeling of, I, you know, I don't understand what I need to do for my kid to be safe and for this camp experience to work. So how do we break down those top three points? And then how do we review them? And if you're overwhelmed by that, then remember, you get to do this again next year. So take those same things. You've got your top three done. You've done it in three different media f- formats, an infographic, uh, you know, a 
wall of text email and a video. Um, and then keep going down the list. What are the next? So how can we just reinforce those things over and over again? But planning and acknowledging that we get, you know, we get to do over next summer allows us to keep expanding what the library looks like. So I love and that. I think idea. that's I think that's the crux of it, Travis, is that we're doing it again next year. Make your notes on what works and what doesn't now so you have it when you're ready. And another point on the emails is I just like to front load them and put here's what you need to know from this email right at the top. Put a TLDR. Right. Yes, I know that's young people speak, but parents get it. They know what they need to look for in that email. Mm -hmm. to, to be fair to folks, tell me what TLDR means. Thank you. Uh, too long, didn't read. It's frequent of Reddit and internet speak for here's the bottom line of whatever this long text wall you're about to read is. There's the most important piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It's, yeah. You've been putting a headline on it. Here are your action items and everything else is informational. Good. Okay. Um, what's number two on our checklist, Abby? Yeah. So number two is um, illuminating the hidden curriculum, which I need a shout out camp stomping ground to this one for introducing me to the concept. Uh, but I loved how you brought up earlier, Travis, about just re-emphasizing over and over to parents um, because it is, it's difficult. There are a lot of things we require from parents and it's so simple to us because we're in it all the time. And, but parents are not, you know, they're working a job, they're taking care of their kids full time. And so that's kind of a really good example, honestly, of hidden curriculum, you know, hidden curriculum is anything that is normal or a part of your culture at camp that to you seems super obvious because you're in this culture all the time, but people coming in from the outside might not fully understand that. And so hidden curriculum gets super helpful on the op side, um, just because one, it makes you aware of it. Like, what is my camp culture? And when you're aware of your culture, then you can evaluate it. Do I like my camp culture? Do I like the messages we're conveying? And then it just helps really with onboarding new staff. It helps with onboarding campers. Something I love is just the ability of like, okay, I know this might be new. So when kids come into the dining hall first time, what are some signs we could put up? Where, how can we prep counselors how to have those conversations with kids of, when you need to get a salad, you need to take the salad block with you, you know, or things like that. So it's a much easier all the way around on the operation side. And you're putting out way many small fires just because someone just didn't understand something. That's not their fault. It just helps a ton if you're aware of your hidden curriculum and then plan yeah. for how are you going to explain it. No one who's stressed out in, an, in, in a new situation ever said, oh, my gosh, there's too many signs. Yeah. There's too many helpful people. Yeah, never. never. Like you cannot overdo that. Yeah. Um, I want to pick up on things just because I, I love individual camps lingo. Talk to me about the salad block. Okay, you... so this is a camp um, I volunteered at mm -hmm. when I was in high school, I think. And so mm -hmm. they had a, two blocks at each table and they had a salad bar. And to make it not like crazy chaotic, you had sure. to have your salad block when you went up to go get your salad from the salad bar. And that was something that was helpful when that was sure. explained to me. Yeah, so yeah it's a great system. Creating chaos, yeah. And what did the blocks look like? They were just like, you know, these two by two maybe wooden blocks. Okay. And I think they they were probably painted like the camp sure. colors, okay. but something right. so basic. <laughs> Funny, no, that's great. I love systems. So when when I hear about those or hinted at, I was like, oh, I have to know a system, tell me, tell me. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So think about the hidden curriculum. Mm -hmm. Number three, Ari. Planning your information sharing now and deciding what information you need to communicate and how you want to communicate it, both to your staff during orientation week and your camper families during their onboarding and really thinking about what are the crucial pieces of information they need to know and how are they going to learn it? So you're thinking through is it going to be in the format of a podcast? Is it going to be in the format of a video, of a text wall? And also during orientation week, am I doing this as a frontal presentation? Is this an active learning situation? Is this a role playing? How are people going to communicate and learn the information that you're trying to transmit onward so that everybody can learn it in the best way possible for their learning styles? And one of the ways that I've seen that play out in some camps is visual schedules where there is a, here is the time block. So good, yeah. Here is what's happening, a, like a little pictogram of someone swimming. And here's the next time block. Here's the pictogram of people at 
baseball field, whatever it is, and that there is a visual schedule beyond just having it written out so that you can see it by reference. And one of my other favorites is a Huda contact guide with questions. So you have here, here's the registrar, ask me about your campers application, any questions you have about their forms along the way. I'm the camp nurse. If you have questions about medication or health issues or anything, talk to me, here's my email. I am the camp uh, camper care liaison. If your camper has some specific behavioral or social emotional needs that you wanna discuss, come talk to me. And creating that clear guideline as to where to get the information that families really need is helpful too. Brilliant. What else, Abby? I think documentation is probably a really big thing for us. Um, mm -hmm. That'd be probably tip number four is just to document, document, document everything. Um, you know, your processes of how do you do this there, it's helpful for, um, you know, we all have those situations where maybe we need to hand off something to someone and to have it lined out. This is how you do this. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, if it's a meeting, this is the objective of the meeting. Things like that are so helpful. And then another tool that I really love that's along the documentation side is start, stop, continue. Um, these are things, you know, you can be doing midsummer. It can be a short thing. Maybe you have a journal you bring around camp and you write down, okay, the salad bar, <laughs> you know, to bring up that example again that really works. So let's continue doing that. Yeah. Or maybe like people are so confused on this block system. We need to stop doing that and figure out something else. You know, you can do that midsummer. You can do that at the end of summer is a really good time. Um, not only to do that on programs, I think we're really good at reviewing our programs each year, but also in operations, you know, to go back to parents. So parents were really confused about which health forms had to be turned into who. That might be something we want to evaluate and figure out what, how can we make it easier to parents to understand this form needs to be in by this date and it goes to this person. Yeah, I think that that's great. And I think that I wish that there was someone whose specialty in the camp world was information management, information organization, because so many people have so many different little lists here and there for all of yeah. these things. Um, yeah. I also think it's worth camps creating a simple Google form um, that all the staff can bookmark that is the start, stop and continue form. It's like when you see it, send it. And, um, you know, there's spaces around where it's safe to pull out a phone and do that, or you can get to a, a computer to do that then. Because um, it's hard to organize the information, but you definitely have to have the information to need to, mm -hmm. to organize it. It's got to be actively created. Okay. Yeah, for sure. You don't want to be relying on your memory for stuff. Oh, no. In September, October? No. No. <laughs> no. What's next, Ari? Scheduling. Uh, one of the favorite ideas, I actually think I first heard this on a Camp Hacker podcast, was the So You Want to Be a Supervisor Next Summer meeting. And the idea that we nice. can already in the current summer be setting us up for success the following summer by telling people this is what is needed of the people who fill the supervisory roles. Here's what we're gonna be asking of them. This is what the interview process looks like. Here's what the roles and responsibilities are, everything that they might wanna know so that they can make the informed decision about, do I want to apply for one of these jobs, whether it's head of the waterfront or a unit head or running the transportation and logistics of the camp. It could be any of those positions that so you want to take it up to the next level. And I think that's a really important thing to schedule in now so that you don't have to worry about it come summertime and figure out what day are we doing that. Just put it on the calendar. It'll happen on its own. You just have to put it on the calendar now. Uh, and then in before, before that, you move on, Ari, yeah. uh, I want to reiterate because this sounds like something I would have said at some point in Camp Backers history for sure. Um, I, it, it, what this does is helps people feel noticed. That's my great passion. We're recruiting summer camp to create situations to feel noticed and appreciated. And 
when you are a young staff member, not sure, not even thinking about next summer, um, the act of being noticed by someone you look up to is so incredibly powerful. That's how we continue to work towards getting more staff to return is making them feel noticed and appreciated that we have a vision for them and what they can do. Often it will surprise people what, the, what we think they can do, what we know that they can do after years of camp parenting. So I appreciate that. I'm sorry, cut you off. I just don't want to lose that want to put a little button on that piece. No, it's great. I think it's a really important component of helping staff feel a part of the community and as invested in it as some of us full-time people are, that we that they really see that piece too. Uh, and right alongside that so you want to be a supervisor meeting is the shadow day and the opportunity to follow someone in that role and really understand what it is they do, see what they do, and maybe ask them questions that they may have never thought about that could help people like us do our jobs better when someone who's never seen this and has fresh eyes asks us something that totally could upend how we our, our own processes in a good way or really challenge what we do. And I think that's really crucial. Um, Abby, did you have anything else on the shadow day component? I think something that like is just an automatic perfectly tie into the last one when we were talking about start, stop, continue is have them do that too. Um, so that's additional feedback you can take in at the end of the summer when you're looking at it and be like, oh, this person, you know, ideally the person on a shadow day is someone who's somewhat familiar with your camp, maybe an alumni or whatever. Um, so someone maybe who has a little bit of context, but also someone who is coming in pretty fresh and, you know, having the ability to look through their eyes and being like, oh, this process that I would have put as like, keep doing this, this is going great, is actually in the stop category for them. So I want to know why, why is this process that I think is working actually isn't working for them? Is it a personality thing? Could it be clearer? Or is it just like, this is how I operate and it makes sense to me. And it actually is not making sense to anyone else at camp. Totally, totally agree about that other perspective there and having them add that voice to our feedback and giving us all the information we need to make informed decisions about the following years moving forward. Um, one of the other scheduling pieces I want to add here is, again, we talked about shopping lists and mass emails, and I would just underscore that again. With the mass email piece, I want to be very specific about planning for what days your emails for those camps that open registration during the previous summer, that you have those ready to go and like those, you know when you're opening that so that you have your application ready. Mm -hmm. And also your post-summer surveys scheduled out so that as soon as your first group of kids goes home, you've got that survey off to them and you can get the fresh feedback that you need, again, to make informed and smart decisions about the following summer. Yeah. So smart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I kind of lost who started is who wants to take on new initiatives and creations? I can talk about that. Please. Uh, so new initiatives and creations, I think, one tool that I'm really excited about is one I heard from Gabrielle Rail um, at Camp Oro a long time ago, but it's the pocket counselor. It is probably one of the smartest things I've ever heard from a director where you just have all the information you're going through on staff training and you put it on little, they're even smaller than index cards, like business card size. And it's on a ring clip and you can just flip through. It has things like, what is the schedule? Uh, what are, you know, procedures, policies, things like that. So smart because you go through so much information on staff training week. It's impossible to expect folks to remember it all. And so they can have this that they can carry around. Um, something I want to do this year is give all my staff blank sheets that they can put in their pocket counselor. So they're writing their own notes during training and remembering additional things. So it just helps. It's one more way for all of that to stick in to their minds. Um, I think another thing that's really smart here is kit creation. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you are like, you know, for a rain day or whatever, you want to have a tie dye kit that folks could do in your art room or whatever, just having all the supplies in um, like a Rubbermaid container or something that folks can just know, okay, I have this, it's all my supplies, you're not scrounging around for things, and then the art room's a mess, and then it creates problems, you're really, it minimizes and kind of reduces problems if you're prepared and have set things people can take, whether that's tie-dye, friendship bracelets, 
whatever s'mores thinking and those, those things and those supplies can all be ordered pre-summer and assembled by someone with a little bit of extra time during staff week it does not need to be you i'm sure there's someone available that can just take a couple of minutes and assemble those kits so that they're ready to go at a moment's notice when you need it whether it's the tie-dye the friendship bracelet the birthday kit whatever it is that you've got in your kits in addition to the pocket counselor, I want to just highlight this really cool uh, piece of curriculum that Dr. Aviva Levine Jacobs at Camp Ramon, California adapted from something called the toolbox curriculum, which just has these different tools that you can use with your kids in moments of challenge of what it is that they need in a moment. And a lot of the staff wear these on their name tags there. Smart. Super uh, smart. And then one other piece, again, under new initiatives and creations, bottom lines document. This is one of my favorite pieces to distribute. It is by no means exciting. It is by no means the most innovative piece of thing in camping, but it is a very clear one page double sided document that outlines these are the bottom line rules that we expect from staff during the full summer. And these are the things that you need to know moving forward. Yes, you might have a staff, staff handbook that's way too many pages long. Here's the one page distilled version of, you know, know this, know doing these things, please do these things, please report these things. Here's how we create a great summer. And just having it easily uh, understood in that short of a piece is important to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Totally. That reminds me of um, one, one session we always did in, in staff training, we were huge believers in sessions should be creative, they should be, um, you know, energetic and new and different things, but we'd have one half hour session called how to get fired. And that's, the, that's, that's the, the, you know, there's no song, there's no dance, there is just this. Um, and these are our ultimates, and that'd be just the perfect match to your, um, you know, your bottom line document. For sure. That's really smart. I love that title because I feel like the policies and procedures, they're like, uh, maybe I'll just zone out for that half sure. hour. And it's like, no, I don't want to get fired. I'm I'm locked in. Mm -hmm. yeah. So smart. I had a camp director years ago who used to bury a question in the staff handbook. And it said, while we're on this topic, go send camp director your favorite camp approved snack and so he knew who read it and every year yep. be in a different place and then anyone who didn't read it had to sit back for like one extra here's the staff handbook section of yeah you know and so like both he knew who read it or who knew who knew to look directly for that thing yeah and it created a way to reinforce making sure that you are looking through it absolutely that's the green m m story yes that van halen put no green m ms in their rider so that they could know that all of the very, you know, bottom line safety things were completed because they knew that people had read through all of the contract and checked off all the things. I love that. Just a little code to help out. That's good. So what about who you lean on? Yeah. So I think when it comes to leaning on, um, just think through who are the people you can bring around you who can help you out with things. Uh, that could be staff maybe who, you know, that's, people who are interested in those supervisory roles, um, maybe inviting them in and saying like, hey, if you have some extra time, you wanna to put together the kits that we talked about, um, things like that, inviting in stuff like that, cross training, um, you know, creating, I think we mentioned this maybe last podcast, but creating a spreadsheet and then listing out duties and then listing who else can be in charge of those duties, uh, you know, in case something happens, or even just, you know, camp directors are often doing at a minimum five different things at one time. So, you know, what's one thing I could pass off to you that you could do and I don't have to. Um, I think another big thing is just outsourcing. You know, what are the things that you're doing that you don't actually have to do? And yes, you might have to pay for it, but look at your time. Is it worth trading off your time to pay a little bit more each month for someone to do, you know, manage your software better or to come in and do some of that office work that is just keeping you from doing your mission and doing things that align with your values. 
that person doesn't have to be at camp. That's the yeah. important part. Is totally. you could have someone offsite who's got some extra time. You know, maybe it's five hours a week or whatever it is, and all they are doing is confirming the buses for you. Right. Like think about how what a relief that is to just take that off your plate. Yeah. And that's that's something so easy and so worth the expense. Uh, and yeah, and there are lots of camps that even have camp parents, camper parents who do that. That they're interested in engaged parents who say, you know, I want to help. Um, I know camps that have had parents run their social media um, stuff. You know, it depends on their skills and and what your systems are. But yeah, being really smart about that. And for those camps that are employing college age staff, some of them are getting off out of school, you know, May 1, May 15, whatever it is, mm -hmm. the whole month of time that they could come into your office and have an internship, see a little bit behind the curtain, get that shadowing experience and help do the tasks that you might not just have the time for, but they do and they can learn about this industry. Yeah. Yeah, smart. It's out there for sure. Um, the other thing I was going to say that ties into to your piece, Abby, is I always encourage camp pros to have beside their monitor just somewhere um, what I call the VoIP number, the value of your time, so that you know what you cost camp per hour. You know, take your salary minus vacation and, you know, divide it by the number of weeks and number of hours. And then you know that I'm out per hour. And, you know, at some point, if you ever hear someone in camp say, well, I'm just going to learn WordPress and I'll build the website myself, then you need to scream at that person because it yeah. is never less expensive for the camp for you to learn WordPress ever. Um, and I know some very smart, very technically capable camp pros who have said that sentence to me and they've still been at it six months later, sometimes years later. Yeah. So I hope you give yourself a bit of focus. Yeah. And I know like I come from a small nonprofit perspective for, mm -hmm. so for a really long time that like outsourcing the idea of paying someone to do my tasks was really hard to swallow because I knew yeah. how small our budget was, yep. but it is so true. Like everything you pay to have someone who is more capable than you do something that they can do in less time. Faster. Yeah. Worth it. So mm -hmm. worth it. Yeah. Definitely. What uh, what do you think about staff appreciation? So I think a big thing on staff appreciation is kind of goes back to what we mentioned at the beginning, but just making sure people know they are seen. Um, making sure people know that they are valued and they are not just a warm body that is keeping you in your safety quotas or whatever. Um, I think planning how you're going to do that is really, really crucial because every summer, you like no one, no one goes and being like, I want to, you know, I'm not going to make sure my staff knows they're appreciated or whatever. Yeah. But summer happens and you just forget to, you know, do things. And then it comes time, maybe you have to give a critical feedback and you haven't done anything all summer to affirm this person, then you get critical feedback and it's a situation and just planning regular times where you're telling people, I saw you, I appreciate you, you're known here, you know, this is valuable. And I hope, you know, you're getting something out of this too. Just planning things to do for that is so important. Staff activities are also so easy to, like they're easy to do, Mm. They're also really easy to forget about and they come to they go to the bottom of the list. And so if you just come up with here are four back pocket things that we can do, I'm going to plug them in on these four Saturday nights of camp. And that's our good start. Great. I've got, you know, we're going to have a barn Western theme thing and we'll bring in a square dance collar and that'll be our one big thing for the night. And then the next time we're going to have a, I don't know, a 4th of July carnival and we'll have some fireworks and churros and whatever else like the little things that you can do to create a staff hangout space and a little bit of fun for them and give them the camp experience is also really important to create that environment where they are able to be themselves without the worry about their job of I've got all these kids to care for and like find a way to give them that time to enjoy a staff activity and it also might mean that you have someone on your staff whose job it is to plan for those. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're not lucky enough and you can't afford that job, then yeah, planning ahead makes that, mm -hmm. makes those things possible. Yeah. yeah. And even yeah. if you have someone in that job, sometimes those things change midsummer. 
Totally. It, it is often a staff appreciation person who gets pulled in other directions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think something cool to train staff on too is just peer appreciation. So training them to see and acknowledge the things that their peers do well. You know, we often yeah. tend to think oh, of yes. feedback in negative terms, but feedback is also positive. And so, you know, not only planning from a supervisor level, when are you going to give feedback, but also training staff to be like, that was really cool what you did over there. You know, training them to affirm each other helps if that staff appreciation person, you know, regardless helps, but especially if you don't have a staff appreciation person to designate, just bringing as many people around your staff as possible. Yeah. I know it's been talked about on this pod many times before, the Make My Day book, and it's really easy to have that as a survey where you ask mm -hmm. your staff, what are the ways that somebody can make your day for free, for $5, for $10, whatever yeah. it is, and like, what are the snacks that you like, what are the ways that you relax, whatever it is, and that anyone in, in camp can go look you up and say, oh, I want to go do something special for this person, this is their coffee order, I'm going to make a quick run out and grab it for them. Love it. So smart. And our number 10 one, who's... So this is a fun one. And I Go. I want to preface this and say, this is not so much a tip, but this is a mindset for the summer. Hmm. And I think it's really helpful. And this is something that I heard used many times coming from the Camp Ma network and world. And this comes from a, an old, you know, traditional Jewish tale from Poland many years ago. And that it's adapted to camp that we should live each day as if we're carrying a slip of paper in each pocket. And one of them reads, this is the most important job that I will ever have. And the other should read, it's summer camp and know when to read which. And I think having that mindset going into this important work that we're doing over the next 121 days and over the next, uh, and over the summer really will help both keep us in that perspective that we need in this work and inspire us further to do the work that we need when we are in our tough moments. That is a perfect wrap up on this. Thank you. A great spot to end it on. So if you want to review the top 10, um, check out our show notes at camphacker.tv slash podcast. So thank you to you both. And I'm really grateful. I'm going to take just a second now and thank Ultra Camp. Ultra Camp is the sponsor of Camp Hacker this season, and we're grateful to them for their support, their understanding um, of what Camp Pro's needs, and their support so that we at Go Camp Pro can create stuff like this for Camp Pro's around the world. Camp Hacker listeners can discover the 10 best marketing tools and tips that Ultra Camp has put together by visiting their ultracampmanagement.com slash camphacker address. There you can download their free guide, The Marketing Toolbox. When you feel like you spend so much time in the office that you don't get to spend time with campers or get to know your staff, appreciate your staff as we've been talking about, the, the folks at AltaCamp know that you didn't get into this job to sit at your desk and run reports. So they created the software to help you efficiently and quickly get your registration, your reports done quickly so that you can get out there and do um, the big changes that you want to do in the world. So when you use AltaCamp, there are no limits on what you can report or how often you can get those insights or advice from the data. With AltaCamp, you can get unlimited customer reports, unlimited support, unlimited training, and you can have unlimited users use that so you can delegate some of that work. AltaCamp's goal is to provide the best resources so their clients can spend more time in camp doing what they do best. If this all doesn't sound like your registration software, don't you think it should? Visit AltaCamp's website at ultracampmanagement.com slash camphacker and set up a time to chat. They look forward to hearing from you. Now we are going to move us on to our tool of the week. So we've asked our co-hosts to bring something that um, helps them or, or could help others be a better camp director. Um, I'm gonna go first this time. Um, I have a funny tool that, um, I think it came from Ruby. I don't even know where this came. I just know that I included it in my tool of the week newsletter and um, 
<laughs> and I was like, I really needed this at some point. It is called the Uprooter. It is a tool for doing cleanup around camp, for making paths, whatever it is. It's a tool that helps you produce leverage on uh, small trees and bushes to pull them up out of the ground. So it's using levers to make that. Um, you go to camphacker.tv slash podcast, look at this episode 163 to find all of our tools. You'll see the link there if you can't remember Uprooter, um, but just a, a great tool for some of those manual jobs that um, get stuck when you're you know, clearing some land for a new program or just keeping your trails going. It's a, a great looking tool for that. Um, Ari, what's your tool? My tool is Adam Grant's Instagram, Instagram and Twitter account. Um, I really appreciate Adam Grant, who is this fantastic author, and he just dispenses these little nuggets of wisdom frequently, um, I think almost daily, actually, on his Instagram account. And I have a folder that I save the ones that I feel could be useful for me, both to just remember personally, or that will be staff training components at some point uh, in a saved folder on Instagram. And I just really appreciate all, he, all of what he has to offer in that space. Yeah, it's very smart. Thanks, Ari. Abby? Yes, so my tool of the week is a website. It's called GoZen, uh, Z-E-N. And it is a website dedicated to creating tools for helping social emotional learning and youth. Uh, there is a free newsletter you can sign up for, and it is worth it. I All the principles and the tips they've sent me so far have been almost like, immediately applicable and I'm like that is so smart why didn't I think of that and so highly recommend checking them out uh, seeing their free resources as well as some of their paid things that's a great one thank you I uh before we say goodbye I want to take a second and shout out another Go Camp Pro podcast um I am watching the work that is being done in the first class counselor show it is the perfect show for you to give to your staff. It is built by Matt and Oliver for camp directors to give to their staff. Like, here's a lesson about this. You can pick and choose from uh, dozens of episodes and uh, pre listen to them, decide what helps. It's just one of those great, once a week, send them a link to another show. Don't say, go listen to the fundraising, or the fundraising. Don't listen to, to First Class Counselors, the bulk. Um, and, um, just instead send them one episode a week just a quick reminder um about here's the thing that i heard that's a, a great show for that so that's my recommendation check out uh the first class counselor show and send it to your staff i want to take a second thank you both and i'm so grateful that again you've come up and said hey we've got a great idea and and we've already got a plan um i appreciate you being the kind of pros that share this kind of thing that think about other people uh doing this job and and so grateful to have you both here yeah thank thanks you for providing the space Awesome. So if you want to hear or reach out to, pardon me, if you want to reach out to Abby or Ari, go to camphacker.tv slash podcast. This is episode 163. You can find the show notes, how to get in touch with them. Um, I want to thank you all for listening. Please do share this episode if it's helpful with your other camp director friends. And thanks for the evening, friends. <laughs>